Uh, this is a Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is February 12, 2023. This is a Sunday morning message. Uh, it's entitled, Jesus Master, Are You Telling Me All These People Are Going to Hell? Jesus Master, Are You Telling Me All These People Are Going to Hell? From Matthew 23, verse 1 through 15 is the text we started with. This is a part two that we have before us. And uh, we'll go right into exactly around where we left off uh, from the uh, last message that we had. And let's look at, if you will, our text, Matthew chapter 23. And I think Jesus would know who's going to hell. I think he's qualified to say that because he's going to be the one to put the people there. So I, th I think he's pretty accurate in what he's saying, uh, 100%. So Matthew 23, and let's look at, if you will, verse uh Number 23. Now, this is a large group of people, saints. This is a very large group of the scribes and the Pharisees. Uh, this is a very large group. And, and he's going to talk about as we're going to read the Sadducees. They have their scribes, too. The Bible says they have their scribes. It's got the Herodians. These are the leaders of the spiritual community. There's only one spiritual community. It's the Jews at this point. Christianity has not been established. And all things else are false. This is a very large number of people. And then he's going to talk about the people in general. The populace of Jews. And you have to stop for a minute and ask yourself, well, you know, what is he saying? He's saying what he's saying, brother. Christ isn't respected anymore. As not as much in the church as he used to be. And never was respected in the world as he should have been. So you have statements made from the Bible that really don't mean very much to people. I've talked to people at my job, and you pass by them and you wave, and they, they never come up to you. Just, you know, sometimes very rap. They say, hey, I looked at those scriptures you got. You can hardly get that. Neighbor. I haven't done nothing to hurt nobody. I mean, I speak to them and say, how come you? You got to bring the subject up. They'll eat, they'll live, they'll make more money than you, but they just won't come and Talk, now, if you'd have told them about getting a million dollars and you could show you had, you could show somebody, I guarantee you they will haunt you down and come knocking at your door. But because this isn't respected, this isn't, it's, it's just a bunch of words written by men who are dead, by a savior who they still think is dead. If he's risen, he doesn't really care about the earth. That's what they think. A God who no one has truly seen in his form because you can't see him, the Father. Jesus said, you have never seen him. Shape. He said, I know what he looked like. I'm in his bosom. So you'll never see the father's form. You can't. You can't. He's too big. That's too much of him. You can't see him. You're going to see Christ. That's going to be good enough. If you and I live right to get to see him. They saw a man that had Christ in him, which is that one man. That's the same person. Jesus, same flesh is his. And the inner man is him. But that's, that, that's not how it looks spiritually. So what is the big deal with people accepting what Christ has said? I can't answer that for you other than they don't believe. Because this is the only answer that the Lord gave. They don't believe. See, you're designed, you and me, we're designed to accept what we want to accept. You're not designed to be forced in the faithfulness. You're just not. That's the way God made us. That's the way he wanted to make us. It's not an accident. And you have to accept when you tell people about Christ, they'll listen sometimes and they'll let you know, I, I don't believe that by not coming towards what the Lord has said. And in the church of Christ, that has grown as Christ promised it would and it's gotten worse. Love of men has waxed cold. People watch church on TV now. Amen. You know, when I first, I remember first being a Christian, that was the first thing I heard every gospel preacher I came around. Oh, you can't watch these televangelists. You can't worship watching on TV. I heard that so much. Man, I heard that so much that I was shocked when I saw the people do it that told me I couldn't do that. So I was like, well, what, what changed? It's still in the Bible. I, I didn't see a new scripture. Or something. But see, people think, that, no, that's not okay with God. Why would you kill a man for picking up some sticks? They were his sticks. Why would you kill him? It's because the Old Testament, well, you did kill a man for killing another man and taking his woman. So why would you not kill him like you killed God? We, he said it was sorry, but still, why? Because 
You're not the father. You don't determine who should die. See, that's the problem with being in the church. You don't determine anything more than when you're in it than when you are not in it. You don't determine who God says. You don't. I know you'd like to sometime, and I would too. You get kind of anxious that someone you really love be saved. You don't determine that. So a guy picked up sticks out of his. He's killed. Here's a guy killed another guy for trying to, you know, not wanting to fall into the plan of, I had sex with your wife, and I'm going to make you think it's your baby, and he doesn't die. And you go like, wow, why nothing? If you were the father, you would know why I didn't kill David. I, there's a reason I didn't kill David. It's a reason I killed that guy. It's a reason I had Shimia killed for simply leaving his house, going to chase down one of his slaves that got away. It's a reason I'm killed. Because Solomon told him, don't leave, and you mock my servant David. He says, oh, that's, that's my purpose. I supported David in that hope that you die and not die naturally from age. See, that doesn't make any sense to anyone made by God that is not a Christian. And some Christians don't accept it. Because you must accept he is the judge. You don't know what's going to happen to you at the judgment unless you stay faithful. And then it's hope when you get there. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, those deaths to happen. That doesn't make any sense logically. The way we judge, the way we sit at judgments. But you didn't make anybody, not even yourself. And you don't control anything but the tulips in front of you. You do control that. Unless you've had a stroke or something. You do control that. The inner man, you got 100% control because there's no struggle with the inner man. He's totally, he's the orchestrator. So you have to understand is that you have to take heed to what is read, all of us. And understand, he's going to keep his promise on every one of these statements, whether it's to forgive or to punish. He's going to keep his promise somehow. You may not be able to figure it out, but at the end, everyone will know. Somehow, everyone will know. So let's look at verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of Annas, mint, and cumin, and have omitted the way their mouths of law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are you have to, you, these ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. He mentioned some specific. Do you know why? Because they knew you have to give 10% of everything you own. And he points out, I know you do your colognes too, and your ointments. You're good at that. But when it comes to judgment, justice, and mercy, that's heavier than making sure I gave 10% of my cologne, since it's one of the things I possess, but I did not do good judgment. So that means I have the ability to do judgment, justice, and mercy according to what God would accept. I'm, I'm possessed with that power. I possess it. And so did they. And that's why he's angry. He says, how could you have remembered details that a lot of people, he knows, they're not going to remember all the details. He's specific. Cologne and ointments? My goodness. Because that's what the law says. And now, see, when you read that, you know, yeah, the law did say that. See, that's the problem with us. See, you see certain scriptures and you don't know why they didn't do that because they're so more than right. This is what they're supposed to do. The law said, if you did all that's commanded you, you're still unprofitable. You only did that which was told. How could you do more than God asked? See, you can never do that. So if you did all, which we don't, at some point we feel, you still would be unprofitable. You just did what he told you. And he empowers you to do it. So he's saying, you know, don't, don't get beside yourself like you've done so great. Verse 24, you blind guys, and this is what he calls them. Which strain at a gnat and swallow camel. So what does this mean? Just what it said. Something as small as a gnat you choke on. But you swallow camel. Brethren will not stop online worship. They won't stop it. Because the money is there. And the membership stays with you. Because whoever keeps the online worship last is going to have the most online worship members. You take that to the back. That's mathematics. They're going to keep searching them channels. They can stay home and watch TV. But you'll strain at something very, very small. Something ridiculous like women wearing pants at church. I'm silly like that. That's what I'm saying. So I still struggle with that. You choke on that. That camel, that online worship goes off for hoofs and all, all the way down the throat. 
so ridiculous to just even discuss something small like that that may make somebody uncomfortable, but you swallow online worship like it had butt on it. Ridiculous. It's not going to work, brother. Woe unto you, he says, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. So, you know, a hypocrite is a bad term, brother. See, you're a hypocrite. It's impossible for you to get to heaven. That's no way you're making it to heaven. A hypocrite because you're pretending you're doing the mechanics, but your heart is not in it. And no one can judge that but the Lord. You'd never spot a hypocrite. Ezekiel couldn't find him, but the Lord knew. He had to show it to him. He said, I know you're not going to spot these guys. They never make a mistake in worship. But he said, I'm going to show you what they do in their heart. You can't spot it. That's why you have to relax and stop seeing who's going to heaven for his individual name. Hope. A capital H-O-P-E in front of it. You know, I hope they made it. I hope I make it. You have no authority to say who's going to heaven. If that name is in the Bible that you read and you know for a fact this person with, don't touch it. Stay out of it. Because you don't know. Especially if not know about it top side of life you know you don't have an authority there. it's something about us that wants to make us the father it's something about us man want to make us self-appointed i'm the father i'm gonna say we're going to heaven i'm gonna say we're going to hell that's how to, that's how you will not make it too just keep doing that you can guarantee yourself you will not make it in he said for you may clean the outside of the cup and the platter but he says within they are full of extortion and excess Verse 26, the blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchers. That, that's that concrete you see uh, where you put the little casket in it and it's all beautiful and white and clean looking, which indeed appear beautiful hour, but are uh, within Full of dead men's bones and of all unclean. Some people have it where they just put the whole body in there and lay it in some places and seal it up with no casket like we're used to doing. Depending on what laws in the area that you're in that have to be done a certain way. But inside it's still a dead man, but it stinks. Nobody smells good. Nobody that's dead smells good. Even the ones they find professionally done by the Egyptians, it still has a stench. It's, 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 it's a problem. It's something rotten. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but then you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So this is his statement. You, sometimes we make ourselves look good outwardly. The uh, way we approach people, which is wonderful, but inside we don't have love for them. Uh, that's, that, that's a problem. That's a problem. And so uh, let's look at verse 29. Well, to you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garner the sepulchres of the right. Look what he said. You build the tombs of the prophets and garner the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnessing to yourself that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. How's that possible? Because you, you act and you live like them. You act and you live like them. So you got to stop for a minute in your mind and say, well, wait a minute. You know, you guys say, man, I killed the prophets. I wouldn't have helped them out with them. And yes, you would have. Yes, you would have. Because he says your actions are just like this. But, but you're saying with the mouth, man, that's bad how they did Zachariah. Yeah, but you'd have killed them too if you'd have been there. This type of people, because this is the same type. The difference is, I'm committing sin at a different level. I'm doing something different. See, this is what's wrong with brethren. They wear titles like doctor. See, brethren, you, you just, it's just, you know, why are you saying it? Because brethren, you have to understand, you know, people call them that, right? You understand the Lord said, don't be known as that. And see, you, you're calling him Jesus. You call him Eve. See, you may not know what the word means. What do you think the Pharisees were studying? They were studying religion. My goodness. They weren't studying anything else. <laughs> that's what they were called religious titles for. Father. That's had nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Jews called religious great people father. That's how the title gave him father. Father so and so. so that's got nothing to do with Catholicism. There's no Catholicism when he writes this. He's not talking about the future. He's talking about what they're doing now. 
They would be like, what do you mean, father? Who calls anybody father right now? They would be like, what do you mean, master? He knows what they're doing. See, this is a problem. You don't understand. That bothers the Lord because he knows you're not that good. None of you are that good. Not Moses. None of y'all are good like me. That's what he's telling you. And he didn't have a problem saying in his skin. He was telling you, you're not good like me. All they saw was a carpenter there. You're not me. I'm the son of man. I'm the son of God. You think Jesus, he told him one time, he said, I'll tell you before. You don't believe. He said, if I did, I'm tell you. Now you're not going to believe. Why should I tell you? You're not going to believe it. He did not try to hide or in any way conceal who he was unless it was a specific reason. He would say, okay, you, you, what you saw here on the mountain, don't tell nobody right now. He never did that. He would let you know. They knew when he meant son of man, he's talking about himself. So he said, you're not in any capacity equal to me. And then he tells the disciples in an in-your-face message, you from down here. I'm from up above. Now, is it need to be any more in your face than that? You're not, you're not from where I'm at. Yeah, I know your spirit came from, but I'm from up there, and you're from down here. This is, your, this is where you came from. He made you down here and then gave you life. I'm made up there, and I have life. See, this is, another, this is what I'm telling you, brethren. You're among scorpions. The Lord told you. He told you what you're walking around. So you need to understand, you're going to get stung repetitively if you don't know what you're doing. Now, you're not talking about no real scorpion. You know that. When the last time you saw a scorpion, even not in your yard anywhere, you have to understand what you're dealing with. You are around scorpions that sting. That's what they do. With this tongue, and it's the stinger, and they say things. You are not sight. Nobody care about you studying and trying. Don't say that. That's not what the Lord said. You can't read it. It should be in English because we're speaking English in this gathering. And it shouldn't be an issue. He says, I'm sending you out. And this is what you're going to be around. You can try to tell us who Jesus is and where he came from. We will read who he is and where he came from. And the subject is discussed. It is done. What you believe, not going to affect the other person. What I believe, not going to affect you. But you can take it to the bank of the judgment. It's going to be ironed out. And you will be cast aside or kept. And that's the idea. This is the thing you and I, we must accept what is written. The things you and I don't know, people could write a book about. But as we learn, that's adhere to it. Accept. God is not a fool that he should make statements that are unintelligent. When he says what he said, that's what he meant. That's what Jesus said, I came from up there. I have a God. He's the same God you have. Book of John. I have a Father. He's the same Father you have. And that's out of Jesus' mouth. There's a lot of saints in the church of Christ do not believe that. That's fine. You'll know them by their works. You know them. You might know some. I, I, listen, I didn't tell them to say that, and neither did the Father. That's up to you. To help them overcome. Or you can join with them. But the end will not be to your advantage. And so look around here. And now he says. That. Verse 33. I look at verse 32 again. You fill up the measure of your father. You fill up the measurement. You line up with your fathers. You, you, you fill it up. Two cups the same. One's dead. One's alive. You serpents. Now he calls them snakes. Your generation of vipers. Man, this is a very hard statement because this doesn't sound anything like the TV Jesus Joel Osteen talks about. It just doesn't sound the same guy. T.D. Jakes, Hilliard, and many of your own brethren. It doesn't sound the same Jesus. Standing right by people calling them serpents, a specific type of snake, Viper, different kind, very deadly, still on the earth to this day, very deadly. See, you have, you have scientists and people that don't understand. Everybody that gets bit by a snake doesn't survive. 
See, it depends on your body. So, yeah, most people can get this bite and they'll tell you they're overcome. When you get bit in the wilderness by a snake and you die, nobody want to talk about that. That's the same snake you said doesn't hardly kill people. But you died from it. Never let people discredit the Bible. There are snakes that will bite you and they can't get you to the doctor fast enough. You just won't make it. You want me to get you there, they'll work on it. He died a month later. It just, just couldn't, couldn't help him. Uh, you have to accept it. So he says, you're a viper, man. How can you escape the damnation of hell? So now you're like, said, Jesus, Matthew, wait, are you telling me all these church leaders are going to hell you're pointing to? He says, you're snakes. You're a generation of snakes. The whole gen, he says, the generation functions like snakes. You bite and poison. Foolish statement. And then when it's pointed out, you're wrong. No correction. Correcting others, but you don't never correct yourself. This is a system that cannot get you to heaven. You're not getting, you may think you go, you're doing some deeds. That's what he says. You're doing works. But Matthew 7, 21 catches you at the judgment. The law says some I catch before, some after. It's no problem. Some things you'll see, well, this person wrong. Some things you won't. So the ideas of a person should be glad. They're not living that way. Should be so happy I do not live that way. That's how you should think about it. And don't live that way. Verse 34 it says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, he says, and scribes. And some of them you shall kill and crucify. So now here comes a group of scribes that will be instructors and writers that's not going to do crazy stuff. They're not like the scribes saying, whoa, scribes. You know, how can you escape? Here? Here's a group. He said, I'm going to send a group to you that's going to do right. So he says here, some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues. Look at that. They're going to beat you in the church house, what used to be known as a church of the Jews, and persecute them from city to city. That upon you, here's the reason. Now here's verse 35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, Son of Barachias, whom you sue between the temple and the altar. Now, here's a, here's a, a wonderful lesson we're learning. You're not, you're not going to hear this from any weak saint, definitely never from a denomination person. The Lord keeps a record of the measurement of your sins. How does it line up? How does it line up? So I'll put you in a box over here with the people that killed Zechariah. I'll put you in a box with them. You're going to tell the Lord what to do? Oh, this action you did, you go in this box with them. That's what I like and listen to. Look at what he says. Blood, all the righteous blood shed on the earth, I put you with them. Abel, you're like Cain. You kill. You kill your brother. You talk about your brother for doing righteousness. So put you right there with his brother Cain. Put you right there. And you line up perfect, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. And this is the thing a person has to understand. Look at the understanding. They slew between the temple and the altar. This is a guy you killed between the temple and the I mean, how, how much more devastating can you be? Here's the altar, and here's the temple. You're kidding right there. I mean, my God, you know, man, this is, this is a holy area. It's just, we shouldn't be doing foolishness like that here. And it isn't a righteous kill, like Solomon said. To take care of Joab, let him hold on to the horns, kill him right there. This is an unrighteous kid. Verse 35, that upon you, he says, may come all this. Look at verse 36. Truly I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So now, 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 now notice something. Okay, now you might have thought he was just talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. He says generation. The Pharisees and the scribes are not a whole generation. They're just a couple of groups of a generation. He's speaking to the people. He said, all of you are like snakes. So you're telling me, Jesus, all these people going there. How many times you hear that? So you're telling me all these people going there. Well, don't you know he would have told Jesus the same thing? And they did. That's why they laughed. When he preached stuff like this, they mocked him. The scribes, <laughs> they were scoffing me. <laughs> While he's preaching. One time they were so interruptive, he said he stopped and turned to them and said, you're the kind that justify yourself before me. Amen. But God knows you are. And he went right back, turned, and started teaching. 
So interrupted. All that scoffing. He didn't slap him upside and grab him by the hand, throw him down. But he told him. See, you have to understand something. The Lord is saying, yeah, I'm telling you, your whole generation going to hell. Oh, y'all. It's not the first time he says this. See, the impact is, you know, understand is the Lord doesn't lose anything by casting us aside. You have to understand. He doesn't want to do it, but it doesn't like, you know, like, man, I, if I throw him away, I don't have nobody to worship me. That isn't what it's about. He was happy before he made you. He said I was happy before I made you. He said, I regret I made you. That's why he cleanses the world with water. It appears he was extremely happy before he made us. Especially cleansing out heaven first, much joy not. And Revelation, they rejoice. Oh, we're so glad he's gone. Woe to the earth, he's down there with y'all now. They're happy in heaven. He's out. We whooped him out. See, you don't understand the problem with Satan. You don't understand. See, you think it's okay. You're only protected because of God. If you stay, stay away from the law, take your hand from the work of the law, watch your life get unraveled. What well, unravel means you just unravel spirit. It means not gonna help you physically. You might have more money, but your spiritual connection is it's gone. Nothing happens to Adam and Eve that day they sin. I mean, they don't burst open and turn the worms like hair. They do recognize the naked. That's about it. And shameful way it was shameful. Naked, let's cover up. Nothing happens to them. They don't get sick. Man, my stomach hurts since we last seen that. But spiritually cut off. Get out of my garden. Get out. Get some clothes. Go. And see, you have to understand something, brother. That's what happens to you and me when you start sinning in your heart. It happens. You wake up the same day, same bed. You might have your bank account went up. Oh, my stocks went up. Whoa. Bitcoin blew up this morning. Wow. Nothing happens to you like that physically all the time. But you've been cut off. And somebody at some point will come like Paul told Peter. You're in trouble, man. You don't walk no more according to God. You're still preaching it. Just not walking it, which is bad for Peter and Barnabas because he was with him and the others. So he says, in this understanding, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered chickens under her wings, and you would not! Exclamation point. He's excited about saying, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. So I say unto you, shall not. See me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that coming in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, you think that's a good thing. That's not a good thing. He says, oh, I don't want it. <laughs> you, you, you're cast aside. This is the point where the Lord acknowledges it's over for you. There's nothing can stop this from happening. You're done. The nation is done. Titus is going to come and make sure he burns down to chars. The building. My father don't want it no more. And he don't want you as his people. That's why I tell you, you better, you better head for the hill because they're going to be hunting you down like an animal. If you're on the roof, don't come down. They ask about who in my house. They will kill you. It's Roman police coming to kill you. It's a war been declared on your land. They don't have your baby all old. So he says, it's done. At this point, he says, you know, it's done. I'm fishing it through with you. No, no, no. And he doesn't say it to them. He says it officially. This is an official statement. You're done. They didn't even hear it. When the Lord is through with you, I mean, it's an official statement made. I'm done with you. You don't hear it. But you already know you're not living, right? People can tell you all day, he loves you. God loves you. He's got a blessing for you. Do you think that person is a father? That doesn't mean anything came out their mind. Even if they're in the church. I don't have any power to bless. You can ask the Lord to bless someone if he chooses, he will. You can ask the Lord to curse someone if he chooses, he will. But you don't have the power of yourself. You have to understand that. But when you read and see the things I'm doing with my hands and what's coming to my mouth, I cannot find the Bible. You, you should know I am done. I'm done. Let's look at some more. The understanding is the house of Judah was condemned just as before, this time with no remedy. This isn't the first time. There will be no remedy for the house of Judah evermore. Well, almost 2,000 years down the road, there's no remedy. When you and me are dead and dust, there's no remedy. Because he says there'll be no remedy this time. He said the soul will not be healed. It will not be bound up. It will not be cleansed. 
because I'm done with you. The Jews are another nation just like an American. Amen. I'm, I'm a person of Mexico. It's just another nation now. You have no blessing of spirituality anymore. And now some saints even believe that. It's still God's people. Like so you're going to deny what the Father said. You've lost your mind. It amazes me how people can say things right before y'all. You got, man, say, if you're not drunk, I wish you were drunk so we could explore that away, but you're not drunk. You're so, and you just said that about the Bible, about God, about the Father, about the saints, about how things are configured in heaven. You just said it, and you're not afraid something's going to happen. It's okay, huh? That's all right. Nevertheless, let's move forward. Look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I've heard a lot of denominational people. I've watched a lot of things they send. And not a saints are getting just like them. We send just things. You send things to people that has nothing to do with their life. Nothing. Nothing. No weapon formed against each other. Do you think that's for the denominational world? Do you really believe that? You better go read who that was said to. I don't recall him saying that to any lost soul. See, you send that kind of stuff. And that's what they do back and forth to each other. And then when you do like what I'm doing, oh, this guy is down. He's browbeating the saint. How could y'all listen to a guy like that? See, now I've said nothing bad unless you live in seven. You should be going, hey, man, praise the Lord. If you live in raggedy, you should be bothered. This isn't for righteous people. He didn't call Peter, you snake, a generation of vice for the unrighteous. But he said it's a generation. So you tell me how many people go out here? Well, that's the look, Luke 11 and verse 43. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, look what they are described as, as graves which appear not. And the men that walk over them are not aware of them. You know what it's like when you walk? That's one of the bad things about going to funerals. I've been to another man. You got to watch where you walk in a funeral. They'll have wood over it. You better be careful. I always do it. I don't want to fall in. I know people can help me, but I don't want to fall in. Tap and step on. Man, you know, it's rainy funeral where there's nothing but water. You can hardly even see. Man, when you come from that funeral, I'm serious. you like somebody sprayed you with a hose. I've been to them. And you like, man, you I'm looking down when I'm walking out, man, because it is embarrassing to fall in one of them holes, man. It's just, just hard. Twist your ankle, you know? Crazy. So, you know, can you imagine just walking and there's an open sepulcher? So, and you fall into it, man. You understand? If it's six feet deep and nobody there to help you, you're not getting out. That's what he's saying. Nobody can help them out. They fall into what you're teaching. That's what you're like. This is horrible. Because of a love for honor and gifts beyond what is written. Look at verse 45. Then answered one of the Lord. Now watch. Now he's preaching. He's basically he's pointing out a whole generation. Y'all going to hell. You know. And he's talking about this subject. So Luke's account shows a lawyer, which is a person who knew the law, and then he would bring, so this is how you would condemn a man to death. Paul or somebody would bring you to San Adrian court. He's well respected. And say, well, you know, what did he do? He was called saying, Who, who's the witness? Paul said, hey, me. He said, I said that's why, I, without me saying that, you don't die. Lawyer come up with his statement. This isn't about uh, laws of the land. This is about laws of the land of Israel, which is constructed by the Bible. So this guy's an expert, like an attorney, but in religion. So they come up, surely you're not talking about us, man. We are the experts. And Lord, you can't be talking about us. For he said, Warn to you lawyers, for you laid men with burdens, grievous to be born. He calls them out. And you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your feet. Now, now this is a lawyer. He said the same thing about the Pharisee. So you can imagine a lawyer sitting there. Yeah, he's getting on that. You go, lawyer. Well, what? Us? It's like about us. He calls them out. Overburdening men and not giving grace and forgiveness. What does that mean? Just what it says. You have to understand when he told them judgment, justice, and mercy. Your brethren do the same thing 
When someone is divorced, they do the same vows. See, that's what he means by, see, he had to explain that, wait a minute, you didn't kill the prophets, but let me take you over here, I'm putting you in a box with the, with the one kill the prophet because you're just like, you're just doing different sins. So someone gets divorced, and they get their lives together, can't be reconciled, person not going to get married again, just don't want you, just don't want you no more. And I don't want no, some people, some women tell you, I don't want another man, baby, long as I need, I'd rather die. Some men say, man, I don't trust no woman, you can't tell any number of gold diggers. I'm never, never married again. You, what you going to talk about? Wait a minute, he's never going to get married, so what's she going to do? Searches for forgiveness from God, reads the scripture, and when she goes to what I'm fixing to go read now, this is where everybody's supposed to be quiet, or you're going to be put in a box. With the rest of them. What, you determine what box you want to go in. First Corinthians 7. You determine what kind of box you want to go into. I'm going in the box where Jesus want to keep people. I don't know what you want. You do whatever you want to do. I can't stop it. First Corinthians 7. He says right here. And this is why Church of Christ folks get real mad right here. They love when you're talking about denomination. Why they love that. That's what Israel loved. Tell the Lord start calling them out. When he start calling them out. They said he need to die. <laughs> they told Paul that the one message, that's not fit for this guy to live. Because you're condemning us. First Corinthians said, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read. Make the confession of baptism. Let's see if we read this and accept it. He says, First Corinthians 7, verse 6, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. And yeah, that's the first thing he already said, too. People get excited about having sexless marriages. <laughs> he already said, I spoke that by permission too. See, no, they want to try now. Well, well, yeah, I'm speaking this by counsel. But it's counsel of the law that said it's good. Leave it in there. You're not going to remove it. The Holy Ghost said, I like what he, I want him to write that. Not what you said. I want him to write what he said. I don't want to hear what you said. I want people to hear what Paul said. See, that's a blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. So that's just like, if you have two people and you say, okay, I'm going I'm to teach his advice. Every time they ask you, I'm telling you, I'm teaching his advice. Well, the Holy Ghost is saying, I want you to take his advice. So whatever you do that's not his advice, that's going to be on you. Because I let his advice be printed. See, that's, that's, uh, see, so the Holy Ghost will have enough sense to know what's, what's the best advice, right? So you know that's blasphemy. You can't blaspheme Paul because he's not the author. That's what's the problem. See, the Church of Christ has a lot of issues in it. And that's what the Lord came in the presence of the disciples to get rid of through the right. Get this mess out of my churches before I come back. That's why you got all those epistles. See, we don't like that. We'd rather throw the rock at the other house. But yours is glass too. So remember that. So is mine. So he says, For I would that all men were even as myself. So that's not possible. But every man had this proper gift of God. So it is a gift of God. One after this man, another after that. You don't tell God what gift to give. I say therefore to the unmarried, there it is, and widows. Why is that difference there? Because somebody's spouse died. So he wants to know, I know the difference. He wants to let you know, I know the difference. You don't have a choice. This one has a choice. Do you see this? Let's understand. This one has a choice. That's going to include divorce. You got a choice. You don't have a choice when your spouse died unless you kill them. You don't have a choice. See, you got to be blind God not to see that. That's why he called and said, you're blind God. You got the Bible. You're reading from Moses. See, but you're blind because you don't want to see you wrong. That's what makes you blind. That's what he's saying. He calls them blind guys. So you can't help but run into the ditch. Because your journey is endless. You keep walking. You don't get to stop. No matter which direction you go in life, you're going to eventually run into a ditch. You know that. As a child, you know that. Ditches are everywhere. And Satan's going to build one for you. Believe me. He's going to make sure you build one right in your path. And you can't stop it. So he says here, clearly, I say that for to the widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. He says you don't have to give, but if they cannot contain. See, that's, that's so simple. But see, this is what lawyers and that's what lawyers do. Lawyers, Pharisees. Remember the two groups. So you know the Sadducees crazy. But they crazy on no level. But the lawyer and the Pharisee, he puts that on you. Oh no, you got to do it like this. 
And what does he lack? Judgment, justice, and mercy. The, the lesson is simple because God always teaches simple. The things that are hard, he'll show you from other scriptures. So you don't have mercy. Your judgment is poor. You haven't judged this person can't contain. What the text out? You're not getting to heaven. It's not because I'm saying it. The Lord is telling you. Because they say you're a hypocrite, you're a pretender. Because there's other things, oh yeah, you're giving much judgment. Off. Little bottle of cologne, 10%. What is this value? You own that. Because that's glory. I get 10% of all the lotions I. Okay, well, hold on. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Because now we know we do not tithe today as Christians. And make sure. But well, something, I know there's a lot of false teaching in the Church of Christ teach that nonsense. But we're talking about them, the context about the Jews. So he's pointing out here. You don't do judgment, justice, and mercy. This is poor judgment, poor justice, and no mercy to tell someone you just have to stay single until you die. See, that's out of your mind. But this guy who has been authorized to not only write the command, but to give his advice, you hate because he discredits your foolish advice. And he said, no, the, the advice is if they cannot contain, let them marry. But it's better to marry than to burn. Now see, that, that's the end of that. You can read any other scripture you're wrong. This is in addressing, so what about the unmarried? Who cannot obviously be reconciled. So you know, one of the sad things, we get ready to wrap this part up. One of the sad things about reconciliation is what makes you a blind guy is you don't know you weren't reconciled because of your righteousness. <laughs> you were divorced. When you sinned, you were cut off. That relationship is all with the Lord. You weren't made a sinner. Your sins have separated you from the Lord. Isaiah told us that it's your sins that separate you. What separates Adam and Eve? The sins. And the Lord said, I'm going to put you in the box with all unrighteousness from the first killing. Started with Abel. You go in the box. That's what he said. You go in the same box. I have no murder hell, prejudice hell. Amen. I don't have a uh, money monger hell. I don't have that. I don't have that. I got one hell. And all the bad had gone to the one pot, the one cauldron. And so now you and I have to accept and understand this. Brother, this is, this is important. And the emphasis is all I'm giving. I read the text. The emphasis is being given to encourage you to know what you must do. That's to understand. And that's the thing that you have to accept in your heart. And so I want to encourage you to comprehend that and take it in. Let it be a part of your walk every day. Because this lesson is so important. And why I want to take time with it. Is because you have to understand, brethren, this lesson points to you and to me in our everyday walk. This is you. This is how they live. So what side of this understanding are you on? That's something you have got to make a decision in your heart. What side are you going to be on? Are you going to overburden me or are you going to give forgiveness? See, because all you're doing is you're siding with the Lord that you're going to do this, or are you going to do something you would like to do rather? Jesus, Master, you telling me all these people are going to hell. See, the reason why I want to talk about this soul and it was angels, because this is what you hear all the time. So you can't point to the text and say, well, he said, yeah, these are, these are leaders in the kingdom of God. This is the bona fide, 100% kingdom of God. That has been divorced from God. See all you got to do is go back and read why so angry. Because he said. He told the land. He told Judah you like your sister. The ten tribes. So I divorce you. Because your mother is a whore. Now whether that bothers us. That's too bad. That's the word he chose. I didn't choose it. And you're the children of a whore. So I divorce you. Now the remnant that repents, he brings to him and says, okay, okay. You read like crimson, I'm going to clean you. But the overall nation is never brought back. That's what you're not, that's why he says the whole generation, y'all a bunch of snakes. You can't escape hell. And he points, okay, we know by him. But see, that doesn't mean that that was everybody. That's why he uses the word, he never uses the majority, he uses the word consistently, remnant, remnant. They were all supposed to be saved, brethren. 
They were supposed to none be lost. That's not his mission that any should be lost. So that whole nation in his mind has been cast out. You're done. I'll take one or two of you. I'm a family, a nation. I'll take, I don't care how small I don't care how small. Family, a couple of you, nation, one, that's fine. Doesn't matter. But I'm not saving the whole thing because it's not happening. And you've got to accept that. He talking about Shiloh. He destroyed Jerusalem several times. He wiped out Shiloh once. He loved Jerusalem so. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. He said, well, "Go look at myself. Okay, okay. okay. You, you my favorite. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another shot. After the fool again. Okay, that's it. I'll bring my son. And he says, "Now, nah, when I tell you down this time, there'll be no remedy." Amen. So you hear somebody like John A. He talked about Israel going to be put back together. That's a blasphemous heathen. Hagee is a blasphemous heathen. Because the Lord said it's never going to be put back together. See that's ultimate blasphemy. See that's to look in the face of God and say oh it's going to get put back together. I'm going to put it back together. Hagee? Uh, I'll I tell you what. I want to see that. And see that's what you understand brethren. This is important. Your nation America Thinks it's some type of savior to Israel. Amen. See, you don't realize this. This is in everybody's life. You walk around people all day with a bunch of nonsense in their mouth. Stinging you with their little stingers because they're scorpions. And you don't realize you're getting popped all day long. But you need to understand. Yeah, they're going to talk about it because they know we're all made by God. <laughs> I heard some presidents say, I'm a deliverer from the Lord. He said, you may be. You may very well be. You may the thing you're doing may be. But the point is that you understand they can't get away from the connection to the Father. They can't because he's the creator of all lights and all spirits. All. And you can't get away. So I want to encourage you to recognize in your heart you as a saint began your walk in baptism. Stay Walking according to the gospel. Because these are some very great men. Do you know one of these men's name is Caiaphas? Do you know the Holy Ghost came and caused him to make a statement that was prophecy? You can't do that. You can't do that. None of y'all and me, nobody on earth you know can do that. You can't make no statement of prophecy unless you read it. He makes a statement of prophecy and he turns around and uses it as a reason to kill Jesus, which makes him a fool. But the Holy Ghost, he, he spoke that by the Holy Spirit. That's different than you repeating scriptures. And the law is like, dude, what's wrong with you, man? So you killed me, thank God. Now, if he repented later, amen, but at this point, it's bad. Amen. And you're no greater than him? That's a great man. Now, uh, uh, this guy, Caiaphas, Man, please. This guy, this guy is just the Lord just said, okay, when he sits in Moses, see you listen to him. This is important. So God bless you. First Corinthians chapter 15. It's important to walk it, brethren. It's, it's something else to talk it. But man, it's important to walk. I'm gonna walk it too. But I mean you got to walk it, walk it. Not think you can walk it, not hope. I mean walk it, walk it. Because the Lord said you gotta walk. Peter, I know for a fact, ain't nobody gonna be running around here. Thinking that they're going to be any better than Peter. And he was stopped in his track. You're not walking it. But you're just talking it. And brethren. You got some brethren that blatantly go against scripture. <laughs> it's blatantly taller repeat like Peter. So you telling me he walking. So you think he's still in good stand. Or she. Speaking directly against the text. Then guess what's going to happen to you. At some point you're going to start stepping to the left. Off the beaten path, for you know it, you're in the wilderness, for you know it, you're in the pit, and you're gone. Because you support by your approval that they are okay. That's not gonna happen, brethren. First Corinthians 15, 3, for I delivered you first of all that which also I received. And the Christ died by sins according to the scripture, that he was buried third day, rose again according to the scripture. They were seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Goes to the list. Now, none of this can be proven. Not a word. All by faith. All by faith. That's why it bothers you sometimes. 
It bothers us because you can't prove it. But I tell you what, you better tell yourself and tell everybody else, oh, it's going to happen because it's prophecy. It's all by faith. Mark chapter 16, read these verses all day. You didn't see nothing as I, neither did I. Go ahead and tell the world, preach the gospel of every creature. He that believes is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be down. You know what the secret is, my brother? I want to tell you the secret of salvation. You know it. That's why John, when he wrote it, said, you already know. You know what it is? You believe truth. And when you're not a believer of truth, you don't believe truth. That's the difference. You don't think it's important to go to church. You don't think it's important to bring your children to church. You don't think it's important to not have sex for marriage. You don't think it's important to not get high. You just, you just don't. You're not of truth. And you look and search for a teacher that will give you things not true. And then you're happy. And you build things. And then you die. And they all get burnt, including you. All the problem is wood don't holler. You going to be hot in here. See, wood don't holler. Bricks. Gold, gold don't holler. Ah, ain't no gold river. But you and me will be hollering in hell. It will be hurting. It will be hurting. Now, anybody can try to dissect what fire it is on it because you have never felt it yet. So you don't know what it is. But I know one thing that man was miserable, and I don't want to be there. And neither should you. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 36. Therefore, let out the house of Israel and surely that God had made the same Jesus who crucified both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Is your heart pricked when you hear truth? You're in trouble when you hear truth and it doesn't bother you. And says the Peter, the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, here's the Jewish nation. They don't know what to do. If you went and had the priest out there, you know, do many of the priests going to get baptized? They don't know what to do. Then said Peter unto them, repent and be baptized every morning in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall see to get the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, to all that are far, even as men as the Lord our God shall call. With men of the word, did he testify and exalt, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they, that God received see his word, baptized the same day. They were added to him about 3,000 so they could test steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. Who asked to the church, praising God, having faith with the Lord, with all the forgive me, praising God, having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. That tells you right there, the Lord has. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came to a certain water. The eunuch said, See, as well, but the hinder me to be baptized. Philip said, If I believe all that heart, thou mayest. He answered, said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. See, this statement alone, the Muslims can't make. But you know what the Muslims say that many members of the church of Christ. See, the Muslims are a unique group of heathens. Because they take different statements from false groups and built a fake religion. One of the things is, they'll say, you know, how can God have a son? So they take that as a lot of Jews. The Jews thought that. That's the main thrust of that. And of course, you got some saints. Then they'll go and say, that's only one God. Now here's a Muslim <laughs> trying to tell you, that's only one God. See, you don't even know what that means. So when you tell him to take him to Hebrews, he can look at the title of the letter. I don't want nothing to do with them people anyway. I don't care what they wrote there. He's going to take a portion of the Bible that only says what he wants. But it's not saying what he wants. It's speaking against him. This is the problem. So at this point, he's going to know God doesn't have a son. And then when you tell him Jesus is a God, oh, that's crazy. There's only one God. See, why doesn't he know what one God means? Because he's not saved. And, and you got a lot of brethren. They'll listen to these writings because they like to make money. A lot of your brethren like money and knowledge. They like to do money and knowledge and power. Like all wicked men. So they'll start reading books written by Muslims. And this poison oozes in. They get stung by the scorpion. Pow! Got it. There's only one God. But then there's something wrong with God for calling Jesus God. Got to be something wrong with him. See, this is the problem, brethren. The problem you have to accept in your mind and heart. You must accept this. You don't know nothing about the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. Or how you got here until you read it. But you have no idea. And you know what? If God thought he had to write it first, he'd have gave it to Adam before he walked out here. Here's the future of your life. He writes it. Hundreds of years later by the hand of Moses. And that's the Old Testament. 
Moses doesn't care what you thought when he writes. He doesn't care what you thought about the flood. He writes. He doesn't care what you thought about where Hebrews came from. He writes. He doesn't care if you knew that it was other Hebrews. He doesn't care. He just starts writing. And you got people that they're going to try to comment on this today. You weren't even back there with Moses. Bro. How could you possibly comment past what's written? Nevertheless, God is good. He commanded the to stand still. went down both to the water by Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him. Now, who actually does this baptism? 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. What is the body of the church? Colossians 1, 18. Will it be Jews or Gentiles? Will it be bond of and all be made to drink into one spirit? How do you drink a spirit in? He said, get in baptism. The Holy Ghost will handle the rest. The Holy Ghost will handle the rest. Now, you don't have faith in it. It's not going to do you any good. Will it save me? 1 Peter 3, 21. See, these are, these are red. These are what you call a text red and emphasis given. And if somebody will go, that's what you said. <laughs> but I read the text. Look at it again. 1 Peter 3, 21. The life figure. We have to eat baptism. Also, now save us. That's in the Bible. Not the putting away of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God. Not the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I read that. Who has gone to heaven on the right hand of God, angel, the and the power be made something on him. So I read, I put your pastor and everybody on it. So, so your pastor is going to possibly save you, baptize you, because he told you before he baptized you, oh, this don't save you, he's already said. He's identified himself, I'm a crook. I'm not with God. Just letting you know in advance. He can't help but identify himself because he serves a different God, Satan. You have to accept that. He's got a different father. Revelation 2 and 10. Be, feel none of those things with thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some in the prison. That you may be tried. See, that's the test coming here. See, the devil wants to prove you no good and me. And he, he's proving it by, by putting up pressure. I think they'll deny him. He don't know. But he's not sure. They'll quit coming to church. Let me share something with you. If something is going on with you spiritually, just remember this. Or even physically, first check. Before you do anything, do I commune with my husband, Jesus? If you haven't been doing that, you already know you're in trouble. Second check, when I commune, do I believe what he's saying? Most of us already know. I knew when I was, I knew when I was doing foolishness in the church. I knew. Wasn't going to church. Things go wrong. And I'd always tell myself, dude, you ain't going to church, man. I'll tell myself, you ain't going to church. I'll tell myself, how can you have good if you don't go to church, boy? I was talking to myself. I said, man, what's wrong with you? Mm. My man, I got tied up at work. My man, I had to make you know. You don't talk to yourself? I talk to myself. I walk by people. I'll be talking. I could count less than They're not doing nothing for me. Who are you? I was out of my mind. Like, Who are you? But some of my mind, I'm talking, man, I can't, I, I can't, I can't understand why they do that. I can count less with, I don't need anybody. And you don't need me. You better talk to yourself. Get your mind lined up to understand. Are you walking according to the truth? Because your soul, you're responsible for it. Don't worry about nobody else. You can't make nobody do nothing. You tell them and leave. But you got to do it. And I got to do it for me. The law going to ask you one thing you come for. Did you save yourself? Because you stand before me lost. I don't care what you did. Matthew 7, 21. Save thyself. Paul told Timothy, save thyself. That's the one soul the Lord is going to call you on the table about. Save yourself. You took care of my soul I gave you. He says, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation. Ten days be our faith from the dead. I give you a crown of life. Ten days, not a little. I don't know how long that's going to be for you or me. But I know one thing. He's going to grab you any way he can. And tell like people just say, say, uncle, say you ain't the son of God. Say you not a God. Say you ain't got to go to church. Punch you and, just, and dog y'all enough. And you're going to say it in your heart and God going to punish you. And you're never going to be the same. This is, this is the most, and I appreciate your love for the law because you inspired me. This is the most important thing you're going to do for the rest of this week. And every time you come. That's how you look at it. Go to church. Learn about the Lord. 
If you can't make it, you sick, you better call somebody community. Because I'm telling you now, some of us are so lax in love for the Lord, we just lax, man. And then when you couldn't go to church, you was in trouble. Remember that? I know y'all went to certain places. You, could, you can't even get an answer to the phone, none. On a Sunday or not. Somebody said, I can't reach them. I said, oh, they there. Oh, you got to go to that person and try to catch them now. It might be worse than on TV. I'm not making no excuse for nobody, don't you either. You love the Lord that died on the cross, went through that pain. We can barely get a little cut on us and not holler. All that pain, innocent, innocent. That isn't good enough for you to risk your life, to risk all you got to serve God. You're not, he said, you're not worthy of me. But he loves you. He's going to keep reaching. Keep reaching because he loves you. That's why he died for you. God bless you. If you're here, you're not a member of the church, stay standing. When we sit down, we're baptized. You need prayer. Do the same. Stay standing while we sit down. I'll hold your hand up. You're too sick. That's fine. Whatever's needed. But understand one thing. Get your relationship right with the Lord today. Trust him. You listen to this message, touch a little V-shaped object, brother Fritz sets it up. So easy, you hit that. You want to make foolish decision? Counsel is all around you, getting stung by scorpions out there. It's okay to kill your baby. It's not a real baby when he's only three days old. It's okay, girl. You know, that might not even be a real woman you're talking to. These men have gotten so many sex chains. You don't even know what a real woman is. No, you better ask some questions when you start dating. You might marry a man, I'm just telling you. You know it's legal in America to lie. Legal from the Supreme Court, all at the top. I can I can get a sex change and say I'm a woman and lie in your face. Mm. And my doctor better not say no, I assume you get every dime he got. And you'll never know. You'll never know. I said, oh, I had some birth defect and I was born lie. Just as much a man as I was when the day made. And your children might marry one. You better tell them ask some questions. If that question not too much for you to get married, you didn't want to get married anyway. I was offended that you asked me about a real woman. But then you must don't want no real man. Because what real men do? Are you a real woman? You born woman? You born a woman? You got your papers? Say, yo, no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you're being bad. You're being bad one day. They say, that, that's bitter. We used to shoot ball together. But you, yeah, that's a society you live in. You better teach your children what's going on around you in this country. You don't know what's going on around. If you can't do nothing to them, they can lie to you. It's not a lie. They feel they're a real woman, so the court will say, yeah. That's all. They better ask him. Tell him come clean now. God help you. God help you. Nevertheless, the Lord will bless us and love him. Take your walk serious. Take it. Ask God for help. Ask him for help. He wants to help you. He wants to save you. He don't want you to take your life. He died for you. Why would you take your life? He would have just let you die. He wants you to live. Whatever you need, come down together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. And tenderly Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting. Let me see this side. Watching for you and for me.